Welcome back from spring break. Hope you're all relaxed and ready to go. This week is about planetary circulation, so I just kind of want to add a couple things in there for you. When I got here, obviously, it's the globe, and I'm going to show you a couple key things that um, go on in the planetary circulation. Now, looking at this, I have it broken up between the equator, 30 degrees north, 60 degrees north, and then, of course, the pole. And then, of course, go on on down, 30 degrees south, 60 degrees south, and then the south pole. Now, at the equator, there's a band of low pressure that constantly sits there. And there's a band of high pressure that sits at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, and then a band of low pressure that sits at 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. And then high pressure sits at the polar regions, so North Pole and South Pole. Now, those are called semi-permanent highs and lows. They're semi-permanent because they're always there. They're just stronger during different times of the year. Like in the Northern Hemisphere, the high pressure band that sits along 30 degrees north is stronger in the summertime and weaker in the winter. Now, in the winter time in the northern hemisphere, where you've got the weaker high pressure band, that low pressure band at 60 degrees north is a lot stronger. So, some things to, to think about. Now, this time of the year, we just had an equinox, so the direct rays of the sun are at the equator. And that's where the band of low pressure is now currently sitting. It's called the ITCZ, the Inner Tropical Convergence Zone. And it's a band of low pressure that sits roughly around the equator. And I say roughly because it follows the sun. So if the sun's in the northern hemisphere during the, s the summertime for us, it sits roughly about, what, 23 and a half degrees north, if we're talking about the, the June solstice, then the ITCZ, that band of low pressure, will shift up with it. So it follows the sun. Now, wherever it goes over land, it might shift even further than 23.5 degrees north. If it's over water, then it's probably going to stay right around 23.5 degrees north. But then when it's the winter time for the northern hemisphere and summer for the southern, that band of low pressure will shift down and it will hang out in the southern hemisphere. So it meanders. It basically just follows the sun. Now, wherever that band of low pressure moves, of course, our convection cells, the things we're going to talk about along the side here, will move up with them and move back down. Notice that the names of these bands of um, winds that are generated from these semi-permanent features. The high pressure that sits along the 30 degrees north line and of course 30 degrees south. The northeast trade winds are on the south side of it. On the north side of that is the westerlies. Now keep in mind, high pressures, remember the ones with sinking air and in the northern hemisphere, it has clockwise winds, clockwise and outward. Notice that where that high pressure is, the winds moving around it clockwise, continue up around it, and you get westerly winds on the top half. So northeast trade winds, westerlies. So it actually fits in there pretty easily, and it makes a lot of sense. Also, kind of make a note that when hurricanes form, see how they can easily get caught up with this high pressure system, and if they get caught in this portion of it, they'll move towards the United States. So, that's typically why we end up with hurricanes on the, the East Coast or in the Gulf of Mexico area, because it'll hook up with these stronger high pressures and push them inwards. Um, note that we have two that we end up naming in the northern hemisphere, and one's the Bermuda High, of course it sits right around Bermuda, and then the other one's the Hawaiian High. Hawaiian High isn't quite as strong as the Bermuda High can get, and that's because the Bermuda High also sits in a, an area that has more potential for warmer waters, versus on the other side, there's a lot of cold currents that, that tend to be around the Hawaii area. And shifting upwards, notice how we're talking about the band of low pressure at 60 degrees north, we name those that band of low pressure as well, and we separate it into the Icelandic low, which is over by Iceland, and then of course over by Alaska, which is called the Aleutian low, by the Aleutian Islands. Something to note that our low pressures in the United States form off the coast of Alaska, where that semi-permanent feature is, because it's always there, it's just stronger during different times of the year. They'll form there, and then they'll move on to the coastline, and they'll track across the United States. So interesting enough. So as those low pressures form off the coast, then they'll 
jump onto the United States. And if we're talking about the winter time, that's where we get all of our winter time low pressures is formed from that semi-permanent feature. And note on my globe that it's the actual bands of where the 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north is actually placed are a little bit off from where I got the source, but it'll it'll do for now. So in the United States, actually most of it lies in the 30 north to the 60 north, which, which is what they call the mid-latitudes. And in that mid-latitudes where we have those westerly winds, so high pressure, clockwise, get that flow around. Low pressure band sits just to the north and it's counterclockwise, so you still get that, here's the low, going counterclockwise, you're getting that westerly wind, so hence this area is called the westerlies. Of course, we go even fancier in the United States, and we call it the polar front area, the jet stream. So you'll hear that a lot, we're talking about the jet stream winds. And it's the westerlies, it's the global winds, it's just they give it an extra special name. And in the southern hemisphere, they do the same thing, although they don't typically call it the polar front like we typically do, but the name is down there as well. So it's the same idea, because remember, in the southern hemisphere, the high pressure, instead of going clockwise, it's counterclockwise, and the lows are the opposite. So it still works where it's going around the high pressure, which is counterclockwise, in the southern, and it still has a westerly wind. So it's called the westerlies because it comes from the west. Um, a couple other things to note with these different names. Up here is the polar easterlies. It's kind of hard to see the, the reading of that one. So that's the polar easterlies up near the near the poles. And again, that fits in just perfectly with looking at how the winds go around a high and a low. Um, something else, just kind of a little extra information for you. When we used to travel a long time ago by boat, sails, <laughs> sail boats in particular, they come from England and head down towards the New World, they actually started noticing a lot of these patterns that were going on. That there's, you know, semi-permanent features. Because if your mo mode of transportation requires the wind, well, you're going to pay attention where there's going to be wind and where there's not going to be wind. And when we went from England down to the New World, you could easily get caught up in when that high pressure was strong. So if you're going down there during the summertime, and then you get too close to that semi-permanent feature, that, that Bermuda High, then you didn't have any wind. And of course, if you're a sailboat, what do you do? You got to lighten your load that way you can move because you're obviously not going to get out and push it. And you're not going to get out your oars and start, you know, rowing this big, huge, massive ship. They had to lighten their load, and they're not going to dump your people. You're not going to dump your food. You're not going to dump the stuff you're going to trade. Your water that you need to drink. You're not going to get rid of any of that stuff. What you got to get rid of is just excess stuff that's not that essential, and that was horses. So they would dump their horses because obviously they weigh a lot. And it would lighten the load up on ships so that way they would be able to utilize what little wind was present and get moving. And so that area um, around the 30 degree north line, they actually called that the horse latitudes. I mean, true story, but that's what they ended up doing. The same problem exists on the equator too. Like any of these that have these semi-permanent features, you get right underneath a, a high pressure or low pressure, you don't have any wind. Because remember, wind is defined as horizontal movement of air. Well, underneath a high and underneath a low, it's a vertical motion. See, the air is rising or air is sinking. So there's absolutely no wind if you're underneath a high or a low. And so at the equator, or roughly around there, depending on where that ITCZ is sitting, you're going to have that same thing, where you're going to have to pay attention and not get close to it. Well, wherever the ITCZ is, they call that area the doldrums. So if you get stuck in that, you are stuck in the doldrums. So you have to be careful when you're traveling from England down to the New World, because remember that doldrums, it shifts up into the northern hemisphere. And they had detailed maps even way back when, 17 and 1800s, and before that of just where do you travel and where do you not travel. And so they knew what season these things seemed to be stronger and they knew, you know, what areas they needed to avoid. So pretty clever stuff. And notice also that at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, all the major world's deserts are also located at that point, because that's a band of high pressure. And high pressure, you don't have any clouds, and you don't have any precipitation, because it's sinking air. So if you're in that area, notice that's where all the major world's deserts are. 30 degrees north, we've got all the ones, major ones in China, the Middle East, 
um, the desert southwest of the United States and the southern hemisphere. There's um, a lot in Africa along there. There's the major desert in Australia, all again lying on that semi-permanent high pressure latitude, that 30 degrees north of the 30 degrees south. So something else that was noticed that kind of fit in with everything. Now along the side is, these are convection cells. Imagine that the top of the troposphere is just somewhere where that this top line is. And of course that's the surface of the earth. Well, right where the band of low pressure is, you have air rising, it hits the top of the troposphere, it's got to go somewhere, it spreads out along it, and then ends up sinking back down underneath the high pressure area at 30 deg degrees north and 30 degrees south. That little portion here and here is the, what they call the Hadley cell. George Hadley had figured this out, but he had one little mistake. He actually thought that it rose at the equator and sank at the poles, that it went all the way from the equator, the air traveled to the poles. Well, Farrell came through and realized that, you know, that that's probably not realistic for air that rose at the equator to travel all that distance and then finally sinks down at the poles. It's got to have something in between. And of course, that's when they started noticing some natural observations of, you know, looking at old maps and saying, oh, hey, this is where you're not supposed to um, travel with your sailboat. Something must be going on there. Notice where all the world, you know, some of the deserts are they knew about. So they, they kind of figured it out based off that. So Farrell ended up naming the convection cell that went from the equator to 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south after George Hadley, who at least first figured out this whole convection pattern. And then um, from 30 north to 60 north, he called that one the um, Farrell cell, and then the 60 north to the poles is also, that was called the polar, polar convection cell. So some things to notice with that is rising air, we got the low pressures, sinking air, we got the high pressures. Think about the winds in between, because it always goes from high pressure to low pressure. So if you're right in between this portion right here, your winds are coming up from the 30 degree north line down towards the equator, because the wind is horizontal movement. Alright, so now let's check out the winds that are between the 30 north and 60 north, that we're going to focus on the northern hemisphere. So the westerlies are what we call the jet stream. This is the current jet stream, or the westerly winds in the United States. So the United States behind it. Notice how it goes up and down, it'll circle across the entire globe. Bump ups are called ridges, the bump downs are called troughs. And so you may have a lot of these, um, what they call Rossby waves, that goes up and down all the way across the, the whole world. We're just going to focus on the United States. This is actually um, April 3rd, like uh, this morning sounding at 7 a.m. And we have a bump up coming into the United States. We have this bump down, the trough. Um, this is actually the upper level system of what's coming through later on. Um, this evening is supposed to give some severe weather for the Kansas City area. This is the culprit right here. This is the bump up which is called the ridge. Underneath the ridges is high pressure, so you typically have the nicer weather. And, and this is the big deal with these big ridges, is that it brings in all that warm air. So if you're in the Kansas City area, you know, heck, yesterday and today was, and even Friday, were some pretty nice warm days because we're stuck underneath this ridge of what they call the ridge of high pressure. Well, this trough of low pressure is our our mess up in the weather for today and then of course a little bit cooler because it's going to bring in some colder air from the north and then once that passes through you can see we already have the next ridge building in so after Monday then the weather's going to turn back to being nice and warm because we're going to be in this ridge this bump up so this unit is about looking at the entire planetary scale and then zooming in and really focusing on the polar jet area which is where we're located and we're going to look at um, ridges the bump up troughs the bump down and how those actually end up affecting your weather because your mid-latitude cyclones, the ones that develop off the coast of the Aleutian Islands, will follow this pattern. So our upper level low is following this up and down nature and that's what we're going to start focusing on for the next uh, couple weeks.